an important part of understanding what it means to have democratic structure, democratic process, is that it's not just that the school influences the child. The child has an influence and accepts influence and responsibility for the school. So I think you, you use the word ownership, that they own the school, and, and that's a really crucial part of it is that they have a sense that who I am matters here. And so when I show up and conflict happens, I don't have to disappear into a conflict or be overwhelmed by that conflict, but I can use it as an opportunity to learn, oh, uh, in some cases it might be like, oh, I didn't want to be that person, but I was for that moment, and we can move on from that. Or it can be like, hey, you know, I don't want you to be that person right now. <laughs> you know, something's going on here. But that's where I really feel the the restorative justice in particular is a term that's being used in some contexts in more traditional schools in ways where there's a mm, less deep understanding because the structures that they have available are not as clearly enabling of that type of like like when you're in a structure that is not about conversation it's about dictation or you know, there's there's a there's an authority here, and they have to exercise that authority. That's a different conversation to have restorative justice within a, a democratic structure. That's the nature of what we're doing. That's that's how you define your school is these democratic structures, and then that's restorative justice almost flows. Out, you would like to think <laughs> that it flows out of that. This is the Agentic Schools Podcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. I'm your host, Don Berg. <laughs>